Here we go, folks. The old Territorial Enterprise newspaper, established 1858, was untouched by the Great Fire of 1875. It's a museum and a general store today. Long-standing newspaper in the Virginia City area. This is we're going to be going and taking some pictures today. EVP's readings. I'll do a little history in the basement on Mark Twain and about some of the artifacts that are down there. Some pretty cool rare finds, like his desk, probably his pen, and a few things like that. But that's a museum, very small. It was Nevada's first newspaper. But there's other newspapers I've been to that, in ghost towns outside Fallon, that are said to have their the first newspaper. We'll see. We'll see. It's pretty close. 1858, a lot of newspapers came out. Pretty awesome. Careful. That's that room is original. Just short 1863. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty old. That's nice. It's still older than me. Right. Both of us. Oh, yeah. This is nice. Now, see this kind of history I like. 1863 is section. Oh, it's a Here, do me a favor. Just take readings every once in a while and see if. There's lights, so we may not get none. I'm going to do EVPs. This is awesome, huh? This is the newspaper building. This is where they did the newspaper. It's old. Oh, yeah. Look. The smocks. This is Mark Twain's desk. We'll have to get some personal pics here. I didn't bring the tripod, but that's okay. I could sit it up on that one thing. And get a picture of us next to the desk. You gotta get pictures. This place is just, I mean, this is original. Look at the floor, the stone walls. This is a true basement built in the mid 1800s. There's not many left in, in the West that are intact. Most are just empty holes and foundations. This table was not only a working table, but as well as a gathering spot. This table was the center for operation for a territorial enterprise newspaper. Mills were eating at the table. Most writing was done here. Meetings, reprimands, cultural discussions, you name it, it happened at this table. Many, a reporter, printer, clerk, even the 24-hour cook slept on this table. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mark Twain slept here too. But the table gets a high rating. And see, I pull it away from the table. Here, put it back on the table. Let me look. What's the rating? Eight. It's almost no, in the seven. red. Seven. But in the regular part of the room. See. It drops down. There's no power outlets under here. It's just the table. That's about a six. That's a six. But this one probably holds the most energy because it had the most people. Now well, it's at nine. Because nine? That's because A, people ate at it, including Mark Twain, and B, people slept on this table. And it's made out of quartz or marble. Marble, yeah. It's nice, huh? It's totally worth coming down here to investigate this place. Anyhow, folks, this is like a time capsule. It's like walking into Mark Twain's, uh, Mark Twain's crib, basically. This is where he written his articles about Mount Davison, where we were climbing up near and about some of the local ghost towns that we visited nearby. He was employed for a little less than two years here. But he began his writing at the Territorial Enterprise newspaper, which is this location here, and this is where he adopted the pen name Mark Twain before he moved on to Buffalo, New York, where he no longer used Samuel Clemens. He has a nice mansion in Buffalo. It's a beautiful mansion. I've been there at night having ghost meetings in front of it back when we first opened up our group 15 years ago. But everything is like a time capsule. Everything's preserved. Everything, the chess, the articles, the machinery, the printing presses, his desk, the painting, his pens, his smocks, everything is original. And, you know, I have respect. This is one of Nevada's oldest newspapers, and he began working here. And I follow the trail of Mark Twain. That's why I take my kids to the ghost towns, because they're all the places Mark Twain's been to. And he has a lot of cabins and houses in each town. And, you know, each town has one. And it's really good history. And you have some mounted animals which were found in the area, such as elk and deer. Of course, some of these animals no longer roam here, bighorn sheep, because it's, you know, man's kind of encroached and done a lot of hunting back when this town had 30,000, 40,000 people living it. 
But he, Mark Twain was born in Missouri in 1835. Tried to head out as a young man in the American West, just like I did. I tried to make my way out west for new opportunities. Worked in St. Louis and Philadelphia. In 1856, he briefly considered a trip to South America, and then he ended up changing his mind. But he was making money collecting coca leaves. And he was a riverboat pilot, an apprentice on the Mississippi River um, for about four years. In 1861, Clemens and his brother Orion were appointed secretary to the territorial governor of Nevada. Of course, then he came out west, you know. He spent his first five years prospecting, which was that he started off prospecting in Unionville, thought it was too hard to mine, thought he found a piece of silver, it just turned out to be a shiny mineral. And he's like, this is slave work. The only way to make money is like you got to own the mines. It's basically what it came down to. His brother was also well known out west too, but did not work for the territorial enterprise. Mm. Huh? Does that say, does that say 1846? That's yes. Like, what about it? It was written by James Polk. The Californian James Polk. Oh, yeah. Look at these posters, these old articles, life insurance. This is his writing. These were his. He made these newspapers here. He spent years working at this place. There is a little history, of course, on the building itself. It says, while well, the paper survived famines, relocation, booms, bust, fires, this building actually was untouched in the Great Fire of 1875. It was one of the only ones that wasn't touched. But Samuel Clemens a.k.a. Mark Twain, worked in this building. And, it, you know, it's an important part of history. But he covered news and events. Here's a bathtub. Did you see this? He covered many news and events in relation to Virginia City. You know, someone was murdered. There was a bank robbery. He covered it. He was a news reporter. He was a writer. He also tried to mine, and he also hiked to where we were hiking today. Mark Twain hiked. You have to understand that when I do these hikes, sometimes they're significant to the history, too. Back then, it was known as Sun Peak. But this has been restored. It's been turned into a museum. And they have a lot of, you know, newspaper relics, including his desk, which we showed you. And as the guy said, you know, mid-1800s, you heard on video, so it's definitely, you know, this place has been here a long time. These stone walls, it's, these were done by the local masons, the old light fixtures. Now there's something creepy. The clown, look at that clown. Oh, this is creepy. What? It's a toilet. It no. says Mark Twain sat here. Mark Twain sat here? It's a, look, it's an indoor toilet. It's got plumbing. <laughs> State of the art back in its day, right? Oh yeah, the, the wood stove was to keep you warm when your butt cheeks were exposed. Look at this creepy little, look. There's like a secret room back there. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, there's a door right there. It says no visitors. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Going back to what I was saying, he accepted the job as a reporter. He was not making money and found mining not very lucrative. So he started writing. When the town was bustling, he started writing articles, which began to appear in 1862 when he started working here. And this is where, of course, he adopted his pen name. And he found out that he was a good writer. So then he started writing books. Traveled further west to California. Up in the Sierras, some of these little towns that we visit, semi-ghost towns, he's visited them as well. In 1869, he settled in Buffalo, New York. Later, Hartford, Connecticut. Only spent five years in the west. Two of them spent in Virginia City. Visited Carson City. But he wrote a book called Roughing It about his wild western adventures, which talks about some of the ghost towns and mining towns Tammy and I have been to. Everything's connected. And, he, and his non-western masterpieces that he wrote after leaving the Wild West, 1876, he had Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn in 1884, but it reflected on that frontier mentality, survival, never giving up. That's what Tammy said, I never give up. And she's right. I, I work hard. I don't half-ass my stuff. I don't get paid to do this, but I'm not going to half-ass what I do. History, 
This is, this is the teach people history so they can see places and journey on our website. Take the journey and be a part of it. And maybe someday come to these places and visit the places that I visited. Some people compare me to Samuel Clemens because I do a lot of writing about these places and I visit a lot of sites and I explore them and then I give you my own opinion and theories and views. Homemade still, I like that. Probably making booze down here in the basement. But the first newspaper in Nevada itself was found in the 1850s in Genoa. It was part of the Utah Territory, and it was called the Territorial Enterprise. We wrote something on our site about it. But they moved to Virginia City, or actually they moved to, from Genoa, which is the oldest settlement, or close, it's kind of tied with Dayton, but it's one of the oldest settlements in Nevada. And the newspaper moved from Genoa to Carson City, eventually settling in Virginia City, where Mark Twain had operated the newspaper out of. I didn't know Abraham Lincoln. See, okay. see, there's more than Mark Twain. Look, S.A. Crucibles to measure the, see the scale? It's to measure the gold and silver. I, yeah, because remember? October 31st, 1864, President Abraham Lincoln affixed his signature to a document at the White House which proclaimed the territory of Nevada as the 36th state. Did not know that. Well, don't forget. Nevada was born into a statehood during the Civil War, or right at the end of it, and Lincoln was still the president. Just a few months before he was assassinated, he signed Nevada into a state, which is kind of creepy in itself, but it is a fact. It's a historic fact. Everything here is in good shape. Make sure you take more EMF, because I'm trying to... I'm stuff all over. It's just right in here. Right in here? It could be maybe the cameras, or the power boxes, or the... <sighs> It depends is you're low to the ground so it shouldn't really do that but the only place I get any high readings is over there by yeah where they that's near Mark Twain's desk and where he slept but when I put it towards the desk it goes down hmm. it's just that table that table where everyone slept and ate it's I, I'll keep an open mind and say it's possible there's some energy it could be energy surrounding it I don't know look at all look at all these new did you see these the newspapers yeah I was reading the well, Holy can't read the top of the Wow. Reno Evening Gazette. May 10, 1869, the grand opening of the Union Pacific were connected to the Atlantic. Oh, to Omaha and shit, yeah. Because Omaha had a terminus. Well, one of the terminus. Omaha to San Francisco. Mm hmm. Luxurious cars, eating houses. Pullman's Palace sleeping cars. Look at this. To Denver. Prostitution. To Look, gay 90s ball. Prostitution operating illegally. Mark Twain's terrible temper. When's this? 19, this is 1965. Because this newspaper operated for over 100 years, so you're going to have newspapers in the 1900s. But Mark Twain's papers are locked up. This is so cool. I'm going to have to get some pictures down here. The rocking horse is old, too. Do you see that rocking horse? Incredible. Yeah, I know. Wherever I go, he's looking. Mark Twain, if you are here with me, please talk into the recorder. Give me a sign you're here. Look at that, the Great Seal Sterling Circus. This is just unbelievable. And there's graffiti on the wall. 1890. It's called historic graffiti. See the black writings? 88. Yeah. Here's what it says about his desk. This desk used by Mark Twain while he was a reporter for the terror, we know that. He began his writing in 1862, one of his most successful books, Roughing It, where he recounts stories of his day and exciting life. He lived in the historic Virginia city, inclu including the Wild West. Other famous frontier editors who used this desk while working the Enterprise were Joe Goodman, Dan DeQuill, Wells Drury, and Steve Gillis. I've heard of Steve Gillis. And these books belong to Mark Twain, by the way. These were his books from what I've read on multiple websites. 100 years ago, in 1864, Samuel Clemens left the Territorial Enterprise, moving to California and the worldwide fame. 
He was a reporter in 1863 when he first used the name Mark Twain. Later described his colorful adventures in roughing it, as I've said. I know I keep mentioning because it it's on everything, but I talked about roughing it when I went to Unionville because that was one of the stories he wrote is about how the sun never reaches Unionville because the canyon walls are so steep and how it's a dark, dismal place. And not only is it dark and dismal, but the people there, there was a couple murders of some teenage girls that were dismembered. And the people there are not so nice, and you do got to be careful. It's a historical town. They have the Mark Twain cabin that he built. But I'm telling you, you go there, yeah, I just don't trust it. Do not go there alone. Make sure you bring a few people and stay close, because the people will zig their dogs on you and probably shoot you or bury you in their backyard. I, just being honest. See, that's what that delay and underground boardwalk here. It's an underground tunnel back there? Well, it's it the doorway to your left is where most deliveries are made as the street above was very congested. There are 750 miles between the tunnel and mines between Virginia City and Gold Hill. The mm. underground boardwalk has long been gone for at least 50 plus years. Holy shit! It says 700, look at that, 750 miles of tunnels and mines between Gold Hill and Virginia City. That's, do you know how far 750 miles is? That's to St. Louis, man. Almost. Yeah, dude. It's like 1400 to St. Louis. Okay. <laughs> I can almost make it to St. Louis. <laughs> Not quite. A couple hundred more miles. <laughs> Pretty cool. I like these giant gl glasses, man. Drink wine out of that. <laughs> we have Nevada's first switchboard. Compo composing table, also called an imposing stone or the stone. The printer's stone of choice was marble, although granite was often used. All the type matter was placed upon composing table where it was locked up in a chase before it went to press. The stone had to be perfectly flat to ensure the type matter was of the same height, 0.918 of an inch. That's a weird number. The rollers, mol molasses, oh. glue, and what? Molasses, what does it say? Or that's what they put on there because that's metal, the rollers. They use a mixture of glue, molasses, and gelatin. The rollers Ge were often eaten by hungry rats and mice. So there was rats and mice down here eating off these, probably climbing up and going, <laughs> scurrying along, <laughs> you know? Is this the print, this is the printing press right here? Uh -huh. Wow. A linotype. The journals of Alfred Dutton, what, volume three. The VA Enterprise came out this morning, printed by the linotype, the first in the state. First, this is the first linotype. Look, there's friggin' keys on it. This is like a ma this is a massive typewriter is what it basically is. It's what type what put in the letters. And then it, once they once they did that and did the articles on, then they put it on the printing press. There's an old Look at all those old newspapers. There's books and it's in antiques. Can it says Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And they use uh, those boxes and those those are all archives, all newspapers through the years. Here's the water wheel, use the power of the presses. Wow. This says here popular and unusual views, color slides for use of all standard projectors. It's an old projector right here. The homemade still. Society is a corporation for the production of life at reduced emotions. Manual press used in printing. On this very table, I'll begin his book called The Celebrating Jumping Frog of the Calaveras County. That's right, I've also been to Angels Camp where they have the where they have the Mark Twain Festival. This is an old Virginia story told several years before Samuel Clemens came to Virginia City, a story which circulated around the pubs, repeatedly told by a lying Jim for just one more drink. A story that made people laugh and change with each new telling. The story a lying Jim made was very famous in Virginia City, a story Mark Twain made famous around the world. It all began at this very table. Typeset squeezer. Some of the historic homes in Virginia City. Ford's Exchange, H.S. Beck Hardware Store, S.A. Office. Wow.
John Piper. These are all the businesses, Black and Howe. Lewis Fusler. It's even an octagon shape, Territorial Enterprise. Must be the old Territorial Enterprise before they relocated to this current building, which was much larger and able to hold the machinery. Crystal found in the mountains of Virginia City. Adding machine time, clock, telephone, and check and writer were all used in this building. Some old remnants of the past. Old phone. Wow. Sir's building fund goes to preservation of Mark Twain's desk. It's our oh, never mind. This building was built in 1863. It says this section of the building survived Virginia City's Great Fire, 1875. The floor is original printing press, composing tables, print cases. Mark Twain's desk and many other items are all original to the building. Man on the moon. It's a dictaphone, ladies and gentlemen. And it says a dictaphone was used in the upstairs at the Bank of California, which also had the tick or tape and the telegraph to keep track of the current market and government events back east. Like I said, it's a lot of history. A little old desk. You've seen these in the Fourth Ward School, which we've investigated. We've done a lot of investigations here. i just seen a book at a shop. It's at least 100 haunted places and ghost stories in Virginia City. So we've only covered maybe 25, 30% of them. But we've been working hard for the last 45 years. And Mark Twain Museum is one of the last places that will be invest not in Virginia City, but it's one of the last investigations we'll do for a while. We're going to start doing some outdoor scenic expedition expeditions in the hills and mills and mines around Virginia City. But we still have other saloons and things we can investigate. But we've done a lot of places and we've had a good success rate. Large crystal. There's a lot of minerals and crystals and gold and silver up in these hills. Sibyls used for smelting gold and silver to liquid form. We've seen these before. Some of the mine sites. Very interesting stuff. Like I say, I mean, I'm all about education and preservation. I'm not here to make money or anything. You know, we might bring you some paranormal and some ghost, but mainly our journey is about doing good things, helping schools, educating people, preserving locations, and, and making sure people really know that this, this played a part in American history. Without this, I'm not sure what kind of America we'd be looking at. The West is what made America. It really did. A lot of good things came from out west. Most politicians came to Virginia City to relax and enjoy all the amenities that this boom town offered. It was a very elaborate, beautiful town before the fire struck. This newspaper is only a small part of the history to the town. Big part of Nevada history is one of Nevada's first newspapers. And we have Proof Press. This antique proof press was used to proof galley trays of type when the job went to the press. Newsprint and paper was placed on the type after inking it, and then the huge roller was pushed over the type making the impression. So I put the roller over this. Uncle Tom's Cabin, a rural Sherlock Holmes. A hub chest. Like I said, this is really an amazing place. And here we have, let's see. T began life on December of 1858 on the Washington style hand press. This was a hand press. It's different types of presses. Pretty nice. You're, you know, you're looking 150 years old, piece of equipment. You're not going to see anything like this. There's very few in the world that remains like this. And to be able to invest, I have this place to myself right now, to be able to investigate this location and take some photos and video of the history. This is great. This is why we're here, man. Old ore bucket. I've never seen one like that, but that's pretty cool. This is creepy. Look at the old baby stroller. Wow. All black and creepy looking. Rusty wheels. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Look at the little baby carriage. I mean, this is just 
back in the day, things were a little creepy. I don't care what anyone says. Things were a little like, uh, just a little creepy out, just a little, you know? It's like everything was like, like walking around. You didn't have to be gothic or live the gothic lifestyle. You were automatically gothic because everything was made black and you didn't smile in your pictures and you wore a lot of black. And, you know, your baby wore black and your baby rode in this stroller. And this is right here. Oh, persons owning, operating, conducting gambling or liquor establishment. All employees of gambling and liquor establishment must register his or her name and address and have her fingerprints taken and filed with the sheriff of Story County. All persons have been convicted in the state of Nevada elsewhere must register with the sheriff, Story County, and Virginia City in accordance with the ordinance. Eric A. Jacobson. Little notifications and articles. Here we got some of the tools Mark Twain used. Some shadow shows because you got lights up above. This desk is from the Four Ford School, which is just up the road, and we've already investigated it. One million dollars in gold. Awesome. There's a Slip here, it says one million in gold. Uh -huh. Did you know? I found crucibles. Did you know, I was talking to the guy upstairs when I came back. Yeah. And he asked me, because he said, he said, man, he must be somebody that likes to read everything. And I said, well, he loves history. He will photograph everything. He goes, I wish more people would like that. He goes, they come in for five minutes, eh, and then they leave. It's Old type cases. Have you ever been to Samuel Clemens' brother's house in Carson City? No. Or in I didn't. Clemens, is his name. Yeah. He was actually, he said, the first governor. Was he? Yeah, he oh, I remember seeing the Clemens sign at the... Samuel Clemens and him designed the, the first flag. They designed the first state seal. And they um, wrote the state constitution. The state constitution, the state seal, and the state flag? Mm -hmm. Well, I know... I've I, I, I seen a Clemens when I investigated the old state building they had paintings of every governor it was a clemens in the beginning well, he i was actually he lived in union here for like a, a secretary to the governor but i guess the governor was never in nevada so well he basically was the acting governor i think he came to consider his wife the very first lady of nevada his wife the first lady well he came to unionville too a little bit his brother was also in all those towns around unionville trying to mine and trying to come out here like most most politicians started off as miners like harry reed's family all miners till they got into politics well miners have money and when you have money you're also run get involved in politics because it takes a lot of money to run. Henry represents a printer of 1800s who worked in this building. Henry worked in the building? <laughs> it looked like he goofed off a lot. <laughs> you could tell. I don't think Henry was always serious. Probably hitting a stiller. In front of the head like that. I've never seen an antler grow straight out in the center. It's like dead center. If I stand here, look. It's like a unicorn horn, man. <laughs> How weird. That's freaky. Maybe a freak of nature. That's probably why they got it here. There's a lot of history. It's important to talk to these old timers because they know about all the little stories that you don't hear about, like who was governor, what led to the flag, what, you know, little pieces of wild western history you would not get unless you talked to like people like Outlaw Dad and the man upstairs who operates this museum or keeps this place preserved, you know? Are these old plays? Yeah, these are plays. Did Mark Twain write these or no? Not necessarily. No. Oh, there's a couple he wrote though, right? Well, look, look, Sherlock Holmes or his uncle T Tom's Cabin. Sherlock Holmes was written by Oh, yeah. Not Mark Twain. Dumb waiter connects in the office floor to the printing floor. So it just basically lowered up and down, huh, right here. Wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm wrapping it up. This is my last little quick video. I just, I want to show you something. We have a reading in here. It's very high. I came in here earlier, and I got around. This is about what I got around. But surrounding the most active areas, I get a lot of high EMF. Now, look, it's dropped down to nothing. You guys just seen it. Was at an 8 or 9? And now I'm holding in the same spot. It's not the same. So I, I am skeptical. Huh? 
yeah, there's a lot of power cords, so we have to discount it, but we have to keep an open mind because we have to wonder why it doesn't stay consistently at that level and how it fluctuates sometimes to high to low in one spot. All the areas I got EMF readings are all areas heavily used, like the printing press, Mark Twain's desk, which didn't have high readings, but it did fluctuate, and then this table where many well-known editors and journalists slept on and worked around the table. Mark Twain and his brother, like I said, they designed the flag. Tammy was telling me the guy st told her about how they designed the, st came up with the state constitution, the state flag, how his brother was the first governor's history here. And you know his brother came to visit him down here as Mark Twain was working. You know it. But we're out of here. I was just taking a few last minute photos and making sure I didn't miss anything like this wall, these old posters. There's a lot of posters of a couple ladies. It must have been, you know, heavily well known in Virginia City. Could have been madams or people who worked at the, you know, the Opera House had uh, famous actors or actresses. It's hard to say. Here's the mining map. It says right here the Potosi Collar. And you're looking at only a couple hundred miles of tunnels right here, <laughs> all under Virginia City. Let's hope there's never an earthquake. Could be pretty bad. Multiple levels crashing down, collapse, and the whole town will collapse. 100 feet. What the heck was that? Try something upstairs. That sounded like it was down here, or like something like fell, or I went. I don't know. Weird. But the, whole, the whole, but just the basement survived, right? Gotcha. Mm. The 1875 wow. fire, which took out 85 percent of the town. <laughs> That's crazy. It is. Yes, the Enterprise was Nevada's first printed newspaper, mm -hmm. and became the most influential newspaper in the United States. Wow. And that was before Mark Twain. Mm -hmm. It is. Growing up in the Midwest, I always said I wanted to live out west. <laughs> now you live it. <laughs> A lot of things up here have to go by different names, like the Mark Twain Museum. Yes, he worked here, okay. But it's really the Enterprise. Right. Yeah. And there's so much that the Enterprise did for making this a state. Uh, and making it the richest place in the world, you know. But nobody knows that. But they know Mark Twain. Uh, so we have the Mark Twain Museum. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. We have gotcha. people that go down there. Well, they wouldn't. They didn't see where he lived. Oh, well, he didn't live here. <laughs> the boarding right. house, which doesn't exist anymore. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, it seems like everywhere we go, we find something that's funny. I'm, like I said, from St. Louis, and back there they have a, a Mark Twain house, you know, on the Mississippi. Yes, they, uh, they, they have one over at uh, uh, over in Calaveras County, but he never was there. I've been yeah. to that one. <laughs> he didn't, well, no, he don't. He didn't like anything write there. It. Yeah. He the, found out about the frog here. Here, yeah, I read that downstairs. And serious. he wrote the letter to the New York Times when he was in San Francisco. Wow. Before, and that was before he went to Hawaii. <laughs> Guy was everywhere. So how did he it get, was. How did he get over there and how did they get a house that he lived in eight months? You know, when he was come back from Hawaii, he lectured in San Francisco and shortly thereafter he was lecturing here. I mean, how did he get a house? And then he, from here he went to the east. You know, but it's okay. You know, it's, it's one of those things like George Washington slept here. Uh-huh. Everybody mm. wants a piece of the action. Yep. And the man that he learned the frog jump uh, story about from... Was he from here? No. He was from Calaveras County. Oh, okay. His name was Jim Townsend. I saw it. I saw the And they sign called him Jim. Lion. Lion Jim. Jim. Lion Jim, yeah. <laughs> and what, what I'm thinking is that he went back to Calaveras County and told him he was the Mark Twain, or he had lived with Mark Twain and they misunderstood. Uh, you know, something like that, it's possible. I don't have this, you know, right. no, no facts. But we can always surmise whatever. The sure. man in the Santa queue. Oh yeah, that's awesome. 
Yeah, yeah looking at all the dolls. See, you gotta look at a girl. I don't know what it is. <laughs> That's what you'd be working with. Yeah. The, the Reaper. The yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, one more of those beside Fountain. One more people, and that was for sale. And then the snowmen are for sale. Like, oh, this is the first story of the Territorial Enterprise. We are in the basement. There's a second story, but it's abandoned. Here's a view. All 200 miles of it. This was a newspaper well work, well worth working for. You had the view, distiller, distillery, the newspaper, place to sleep. All within downtown historic Virginia City. So we're going to go down through those doors there. Oh, yeah. The ones on the side. Uh-huh. Outside. That's where they found uh, Mark Twain and Dan Quill after they had put the big press in. Mm-hmm. They found him passed out drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you know, that was after about 24 hours of slaving over a machine they knew nothing about and no, no uh, directions on how to put it together. <laughs> They, they brought all the machines in then from the outside stairs, huh? Actually, uh, yeah, at that time they did. Uh -huh. um, a lot of it was, uh, later was delivered and uh, underneath the, the boardwalk. Oh, wow. Where the tunnels are. The tunnels under the boardwalk were there because the street was too busy 24 hours a day to stop a wagon and unload it. Mm -hmm. So every merchant or every place in town that received something, they'd have to receive it through the tunnels. Oh, wow. Huh. And you know, the, the guys would bring it up, they'd unload it at the end of town, the uh -huh. wagons would bring it in. Wow. The tunnels also served another purpose. Uh, the Chinese weren't allowed on the street. That's what I heard. So, uh, in order to get from one side of the town to the other, they'd go in the tunnels. It's pretty smart at that time. <laughs> yep. But in 1958, when they paved this road out here, um, most of the tunnels were filled in because the owners of the buildings decided they weren't filled in. Oh, wow. Now, the crossovers were automatically filled in. Wow. Yeah. This tunnel from here up three doors was all open until this guy next door built that house in, I mean, that building there in 1978 next to us there. Mm -hmm. And he filled his in. <clears throat> so this down here is still, we could still use it it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. But it did, at yeah, one time it did. And well, there's still, there's a lot of debris and everything. Going yeah. Up. But if I was to open it up, I'd like to open it up and like where those windows are bricked in. Uh huh. Uh, take the bricks out and put in a giant uh, shadow box, a waterproof shadow box, and put in the dummies, um, mannequins, I should say. Yeah. Uh, setting type. Right. And such. Be nice. Well, that way people can understand what the typesetter is. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to nudge that door just a little more. You hear me? Hey, would you pull the door? Just open the shoe. That music of mine must be too loud. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, the yeah. How much is that? It must be tied to somebody else. <laughs> 18 <laughs> That's pretty cool, huh? Sure, why not? Anything with ghost towns I like. I like that haunted book too, but that haunted book was too much at that other place. Uh, on the ghost story. Ghost stories of Virginia City, so I can get better history of these places. Oh, yeah. Shows each of the. Carson Sink. <sighs> yeah, we can get that. And then I guess we'll go shopping or go eat. One or the other or go drink. Or all three. <laughs> Pretty cool place. Old Territorial Enterprise. Yeah, I, I like this. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, thank you. Have a Merry Christmas. You too. Awesome. Got a nice ghost town book. All right, I got to do these, pla read these plaques. 
Mark Twain would greatly enrich the literature that West started his career as a writer in this building in 1862 on the editorial staff of the Enterprise. Dedicated to in Nevada's brawniest pioneers, James T. Fenimore, who on a wild night in 1859 christened this town, Virginia, and to John Snowshoe Thompson, who carried the mails on the homemade skis during the crescent years of the Comstock load. I just want to state something we've done some historical projects in relation to Snow to Sue Thompson. Never made a red set, really. Used to rescue people, deliver the mail, and ride his snowshoes through Virginia City and the Sears, and sometimes up to Placerville, 100 miles to, from Genoa to Virginia City, so he was a big name. Mark Twain, 100 years ago in 1864, Simeon Clemens left the Territorial Enterprise, moved to California, worldwide fame. This was downstairs, just to let people know, so I've already read it. It just gives you an idea, he left the Enterprise and that's when his career took off. Territorial Enterprise near this site in 1860 was published, the first Territorial Enterprise under the Virginia City Dateline. Born 1858 at Genoa, the Enterprise was to become celebrated property Old West, whose editors Joe Goodman, Roland Daggett, Mark Twain, Judge C.C. Goodwin achieved the immortality in Western legend. This marker and placed in 1955 the mark 95 years of Nevada letters. And we finally have this one up here, Nevada's first newspaper, Territorial Enterprise, Nevada's newspaper, the most celebrated in the Old West. This was one of the most major newspapers during the mid-1800s of its time, throughout the country, according to the staff. Its staff, Mark Twain, Fred Hart, Dan DeQuill, Wells Dury, and a few others that I read, the papers... These were reporters. The paper, suspended in 1960, was revived in 1952 by... Lucius Beebe and Charles Kleck, now of Virginia City, present contributors include many famous writers sharing premise. The premises is Mark Twain Museum, operated by Roy Buffalo Bill Shuttler, containing original presses, Mark Twain's desk, and other mementos of the frontier days. Today's weekly territorial enterprise is published still here, is delivered to, to subscribers by mail. Not even internet. So we're out of here, folks. Beautiful investigation. Let me go ahead and walk over here and at least take it's getting all nasty up there again. it is it is it's wet it's nasty so i'm going to go ahead and i just want to look on the back of the building but great investigation and I, if i got a mark twain evp can you imagine that how awesome that would be mark twain's like hey i'm mark twain and we know it's not us you know what i'm saying that would be cool it happens i've seen it happen this is the backside of the Territory Enterprise. Of course, they probably added on to it. I know that during the fire, the basement was left behind, and they just renovated it. And It was just a small building, and then the bigger building came later on. There is tunnels under the Territory Enterprise. It's full of debris right now, and a lot of tunnels are blocked off. And, of course, if you look, look at that. I was standing on that road right there above Virginia City, Gazofer Hills, just where those power lines are, it's just around the corner. And that's where we went hiking this morning. So I give you the Territory Enterprise. It's pretty wintry out in Virginia City. This is Lord Rick. Check out our site, www.paranormalghostsociety.org. Your gateway to all things strange, historical, odd, and the paranormal. Embrace the journey. When you browse our site, you'll definitely take one. Just about anywhere. On some of the most extreme adventures, all the way to the most mellow historical sites, such as this, that are significant and shaped this country's history. One more thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is the view at the back backside of the Mark Twain Museum or the Territorial Enterprise. They would come out and take their breaks because they worked 24 hours on the newspaper and you'd come out here and this is what you'd see. Snow-capped mountains, the, ch the churches, this church is haunted by the way, I've investigated it. The St. Mary's Old Hospital, that's haunted, which is the art museum today. Uh, Delta Bucket of Blood Saloon, the Delta's haunted, the Bucket of Blood Saloon is haunted, the Opera House is haunted. The old Story County Courthouse and Jail is haunted. And one last thing, you see that road with the
the telephone poles. Tammy and I were standing right there. We went halfway up the canyon, stood right before, and it almost looks like it goes straight up. But Tammy and I, we were up there. We almost made it to Ofer Hill, and then we got hit with a winter storm. And we had to turn back because even if I climbed up to the top, the visibility was 10 feet. You couldn't see Virginia City. You couldn't see Mount Davison. You couldn't see any of the 100 peaks that are visible up there. You couldn't see the Sears. You couldn't see nothing. So we turned back. But the investigation's complete. We haven't done a lot of projects this month, but this was a huge project for us. And it's going to stay forever indicted on our site, and people are really going to love it. The history, Mark Twain's desk. I interviewed that guy a little and recorded it. We'll put that into our video. It's a nice place. If you do decide to go here, spend some time, pay the money. It's well worth the $5. Investigate it if you want. Bring a recorder. And just do it. Spend an hour and read some stuff. And when you're done, go buy a book. We bought a book. Because it's what keeps these places open. If they close, nobody's seeing Mark Twain's desk anymore. This is Lord Rick. One more fast fact. Mark Twain spent most of his time in the current building you see, the Territorial Enterprise Building. Because that's what it really is. But they have to put Mark Twain, even though he spent a couple of years here. The museum is dedicated to Mark Twain. Although there was many, as a, the guy who works here said, there was many uh, well-known editors that worked there before and after Mark Twain. But here's the Territorial Enterprise. I almost made it to the top of the peak today. It's almost at 8,000 feet. Tallest mountain in the Virginia range. We'll probably come back in the spring and summon it. Get some nice picture of Virginia City below, including the Enterprise from up above. We almost made it to Ofer Hill, which is just right above here. A few hundred feet less elevation than Davison Peak, but it's the second best view in the range in the area. But Territorial Enterprise, Mount Davison. And by the way, Mark Twain did climb to the top of Mount Davison. He did the hike, and he probably went up the canyon right behind the Story County Courthouse, which Today we did make to the top of the canyon and had to turn around due to a snowstorm. It's all good though. Like I say, you live and learn. It's all about the adventure and the journey and who you journey with. True story ladies and gentlemen. I spilled hot cocoa all over my beard. I cleaned it in the bathroom. But when I was up on the mountaintop, I was walking around like I had shit all over my beard. Like I fell in a pile of cow dung. So here I am, I'm walking into the Territorial Enterprise doing the investigation. I'm like, hi, I'm Lord Rick. I'm here to investigate the Territorial Enterprise. And I got all this chocolate all over my beard, man. And it looked like crap, you know, it was all matted. It's like, where the hell's this Santa been? Finishing off the day in Virginia City with some wild Mustangs. They're very dominant or prevalent up in the Ofer Hills area. Pretty cool. Just want to wish everybody a happy holidays and a happy new year. See everybody in 2016.